it's expected that your children will pick up a few traits from you, maybe your eyes, maybe your sense of humor if they're so lucky. But in some cases, you will get a child who just is a lot like you. You have more similarities than you do differences. Well, my next guest says that parenting circles often talk about how difficult it can be to raise a child who is nothing like you, those opposites, but she says it can be harder than expected to raise one who thinks and acts like you do. Studio 5 parenting contributor Heather Johnson joining me to explain intriguing and curious topic today. Great to see you. you. My goal is to try to avoid the phrase mini-me. <laughs> I don't like that phrase. It feels narcissistic to me. Like I'm putting my strengths or weaknesses or whatever it is on you. Although I will say I'm raising one of these. Yes, you can see them, right? Yeah, and I, I shut down the phrase when people say it, but I see it all the time and I laugh because I feel like I'm looking in a mirror. Well, and it's interesting because we look at them and we don't love to see that they're gonna hurt or suffer through some of the same things we suffered through yes. because we share them. Yes. And that's why this gets challenging. It can be triggering for us to look and say, oh, you struggle with you know, being in big groups of people. Oh, I remember what it was like or even I I still struggle with those things. Mm -hmm. And so to see those similarities, it can be challenging. It's not every day that we point out a mini me that's like us in all the good ways. We're usually talking about the ways that we're similar and it isn't all that great. So is that why, why it's so hard or is that what can make it so difficult? Yeah, it can. And that trigger too, where we look at them and we're recognizing that they're gonna suffer and hurt in some ways because there are some things that maybe they inherited us where we also suffered and hurt. We know that pain. We don't want them to go through it. So that becomes a challenge. Let's talk about how we can do it well. First, you say, don't miss the rest of them. Yeah, when we deem one of our kids like us, we're very quick to assume that everything about them is just like us. It's a carbon copy, mm -hmm. start to finish, top to bottom, we know this. And that's not true. There are things that we will share. There can be lots of things that we can have in common, but they aren't us. And I think that's why I resist the label mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, I don't want her to hear people say, oh, you're just like your mom, or, you know, I don't want to say, you're a mini me, because mm -hmm. I recognize she's a totally unique person she all is. herself. And we can share things and still be very unique. And the problem with that is when we miss the rest of them, we make this assumption and we then overlook paying attention, being patient, mm. getting to know them, actually coming to learn about them because we make the assumption, oh, you're just like me. Yeah, we're assumptive. So we, we parent from that direction. Instead of going, wait a second, you're unique and you're yourself. How do I actually get to know you? Well, I can't, because guess what? I already assumed you're just like me. We don't want to miss that. We also don't want to make those assumptions and miss the rest of them and put them in a position where they think because they're just like us, uh -huh. they can't be themselves. Mm. They have to have the same perspectives Good and the point. same opinions and yeah. go the same direction as us. Yeah. What if, what if they don't want to go the same direction? Because they are different than us. So we want to make sure that we don't miss that there is so much to them that isn't just like us. And we sometimes do that. This might be a frustrating chicken or the egg question, but I'm curious to hear your opinion. Do you feel like these similarities are learned or are they inherited or a little bit of both? Probably both. Yeah. And we want to take a good look at that. It's worth taking step back and saying, okay, if these things are inherited, great. I can stop blaming myself because I didn't do it. <laughs> Not my fault. Right. It's, I didn't choose the DNA. I didn't choose what to pass along. And yeah. sometimes we do that as parents. We look at those things that we share that aren't the greatest or we deem not healthy. And we go, oh man, I did this. And we blame ourselves. We don't want to do that. And if it is learned, how cool is that? We can take a step back and say, all right, there's some behavior that I can change and help you change and we can do this together. Hmm. So whether it's inherited or learned doesn't matter. We still can look at it and decide what to do with it. Decide if it's gonna benefit or serve us over time. And we wanna take a look at that. We also wanna make sure that we're not rescuing them from these similarities. And we do this a ton. Well, that's an, and I was just gonna say, you, you know, you, you, you described at the beginning of this conversation what, what I interpreted as a, an enhanced level of empathy. Mm -hmm. Like, I know, I know what you're feeling. And so it would be tempting to swoop in and try to take that pain or that struggle away. Right, and rescue them from it. And we don't wanna do that. So let's go back, you know, social settings are a good one where we kind of look at our kids and okay. we can see, okay, maybe they struggle here. And then we say, oh, you know what? I didn't love that either when I was your age. And we see those similarities. And and we go, well, it was painful for me to go do that, so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep you home. You don't have to go explore that social setting or you don't have to figure out how to join a group on the playground. I'm not gonna push you to do those things. I had a dear friend who uh, basically gently encouraged their child not to run for student government mm -hmm. because it was so crushing to mm -hmm. them and they were a lot the same in terms of personality mm -hmm. and affect and she really was like, I don't want him to go through that. And, 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 he, it. and he didn't, yes. you know? And that is, that is a great example. Where even in that situation, if they lost or if it was painful for them, it's, well, I'm not gonna put you there because I don't want you to have to deal with the same pain. And yeah. we try to rescue them from those things we might share. 
We don't want to go that route. It's a huge mistake we make as parents. Now we're setting them up to also struggle through and not learn the things that they need. We want to we want to encourage, and instead we want to teach them how to navigate the spaces that we're uncomfortable that we share. We don't want to rescue them in it. Is there a positive side to that empathy, though? Like, we, I mean, I can, I can see, and you, and you described well, the potential parenting trap from knowing or assuming you know, but there's something really sweet about that, too. There's a connection, I think, that would stand to be formed from mm -hmm. someone who's walked the way you've walked. Absolutely, and who knows what it feels like. Now, this is where, when they're different, right? How many times have we climbed into bed and said to our spouse or to a girlfriend about a child that's different than us, ugh, I just don't know what to do with them. Yeah. We have nothing in common. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know how to help them, right? We've, we've maybe thought some of those things about the differences. How beautiful to say, I know what this feels like. Mm -hmm. And I've walked in these shoes and I know what this is like and I won't shut you down because I do know the pain of it. So we've got both sides of this where we wanna make sure that we are so empathetic because we can be. We can be. I can look at our 11 year old who is more like me, especially at 11, and go, I know just what this feels like because mm -hmm. I remember being there. And then I wanna make sure that I don't rescue or save her from those similarities, mm -hmm. that I'm empathetic and I also teach her and send her on her way in those things. You mentioned how it's all too easy to point out maybe the weaknesses mm -hmm. or the negatives in, in a child who's, who, we, who we see similarities in, but you want parents to look for the good as well. Like mm -hmm. there's strength in those, in those similarities. There are, and we are very quick to point out. And we even make jokes, spouses do, friends do, other kids do where it's like, oh yeah, this is a negative thing in this sibling. And so guess what? You get this from mom. Yeah. Or, or grandmas, I love this. Good luck raising that one. Yeah. <laughs> Just like you. You know, good luck. <laughs> well, and they sometimes parents even say to us, right? Wait till you get one like you. And it's like, well, that's not oh, very great. comforting, yeah. right? But there are so many things that we have in common with our kids that are so good and their similarities too. Mm. We want to be talking about those similarities and those things that are so great. And we also want to make sure that when we're looking at our kids, we're taking into consideration not just those things that are really good, but the fact that because we walked in their shoes, we know what they might need right now. And we should be asking ourselves that. When I struggled with this when I was 11, what would I have needed then? Oh, that's what tender. would I have helped? What would have helped me then? Yeah. What do I hope my parents did or didn't do at that point for me? We got to ask ourselves that because we've been there. When we went to college, what is it that I would have needed to have helped me with those similarities that I shared with my parents? Mm -hmm. We can ask those questions all the time and then we can receive that inspiration and those answers we need to help these kids that are just like us. How cool to be like us. That is really cool. And also it's not all of them. It's just a space where we want to step back and do what we can so we can teach them what to do with those similarities. I love They're this pretty topic, great. and as always, I appreciate your advice and wisdom, Heather. Thank you so much. To contact Heather for counseling, you can find her information on our website, 